Hello everybody, today I'll be making a tutorial on how to do bones in layout. First what you want to do is load your object into the scene. Alright, once you have that in, go to the setup tab, go down to the add portion and you want to add your first parent bone, which would just be add bone right here. Since the parent of an arm would be shoulder, I'll just name it shoulder right here. You see the bone is in the scene, but you cannot see it. So if you go to this drop down menu right here, you can select bone x-ray and see the bones through the mesh. And I'll just line up the bone roughly where the shoulder will be. That's good enough. So now for the next bone, you want to create a child bone. Go down to the Add tab once again. There's the button for child bone right here. You can also press Equals. So for the child, I'll name it Bicep. My naming convention is to match uh, the weight maps I created earlier. You can do whatever you want, but I recommend keeping it uniform for simplicity. Now I'm just trying to line up the bone where it needs to be. There we go. Now I need the bone to reach the elbow. What some people might do is scale the bone, like stretching it any way like that. You do not want to do that though because it makes the bone skew and every single child after it will also be skewed. And amazingly it will actually make your animations look skewed. So what you want to do is open the bone property menu by pressing P and then change the rest length right here. This is the safe way to resize your bones. It's a little less convenient but this way you don't get any problems. And you can also change your bone icon size based on personal preference. After changing the rest length you can realign it a bit. Readjust the rest length. And there we go. Oops, look, I'm a little off. There we go. And now for the next bone, we'll press equals for the next child bone, and we'll call this forearm. Now if you look, the way this axis is, its angle is not letting me rotate the bone correctly. This is because I'm close to what's known as gimbal lock. What that is, is when you have two axes, or axes, in this case the blue and the red, occupying the same orientation, locking out an entire axis of movement. Gimbal lock is uns pretty much unsolvable in animation, although there are contingencies to get over it, which we will discuss in a more advanced tutorial. For now though, while you're rigging, you can get over the problem by pressing Shift P, which is to record your pivot rotation. What it does is realign all your pivots back to where they should be, based on where your bone is. So using this while creating your skeleton, which I'm close to Google Lock again, I'll use Shift P once more, and it makes it much easier to rotate and control where your skeleton is. Now that I'm done rotating it, I'll do Shift P once again to put it in its final position. Open Properties, set the rest length. All right. So now on to the next bone. Equals for child bone, and then we'll name this hand. Very simple. And lower the rest length. rotate to actually match the orientation of the hand. Shift P to make the entire rotation match. Do that once again. Try to at least. Here we go. Using Shift P is very helpful when setting up all your angles and rotations. Now the bank and all that match the hand. 
you hit equals, you can make another child bone. Because what we're doing here is creating a connector for the hand to the index. Even though none of the bones in the hand will move, you still need a connector to connect the fingers to the hands. So I'll just call it hand index. Now we have an index connector, which I will put right at about the joint of the knuckle. continue on with our hierarchy, parents. This will be index base in order to match my weight map naming. Properties, rest length down. Alright, equals next bone. This will be index mid. And you want to make sure all your orientations are correct while you're doing this. Alright, next bone. Index mid. Index tip. There we go. And as you can see, it's a little off. That's okay though, you can edit the bones even after you've created them. looking pretty good. I'll just rotate this down. Maybe rotate this down. It's all about tweaking and experimenting, seeing what works best. Alright, now that you've created one finger, start from the hand again, create another child, call this, let's see, hand thumb. Rotate it towards the thumb. And then we continue on with the finger hierarchy across the thumb. And we'll do the same for all the fingers, and I'll be right back. Alright, now we're back, and all of the bones in the hand have been completely done process was exactly the same as the first one I showed you. And now all of these bones are finished. So there's only two more steps remaining until you're ready to use this rig. Now this is where most people run into a wall. It's about time to activate it and this was going to cause quite a problem. I'll show you. Go to setup tab and go to general. Go to the bones open and turn bones on. And all of a sudden, your mesh is in a completely different location than your bones. And that's because while creating your bones, Lightwave took a note of every single movement that you did with it, every single rotation and movement. And it has applied it to the mesh. This is where I, and probably plenty of other people, ran into a wall. I did not for the longest time see any tutorials that address this problem at all, let alone how to fix it. And this is what you do. The command I told you guys earlier, shift P to record pivot rotation, you want to use that on all the bones. Press up and down arrow keys to go down the hierarchy. Go to every bone, shift P it. This will also keep problems from happening later when you're animating. Alright, now that's all the bones. And as you see, it's still messed up. Now for the next life-saving hotkey. All you have to do is press R. Some people think R is to activate the bone, but it's actually to record rest position. It does happen to activate the bone if the bone is deactive, but it records the rest position of the bone, which means it's telling Lightwave that this is the position it is in before moving. So I hit R, 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 R. See, all of these are lined up pretty good. R, 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 R. Okay, done. Now, other than the weight maps, 
your rig is completely functioning. And the final step is to apply weight maps. You just open the properties panel of the bone, and you go to bone weight map underneath wrist length, and you select the corresponding weight map. This is bicep, so I just select bicep weight map. This is forearm, so I select forearm weight map, etc., etc. Now for these connectors, they do not have a corresponding weight map because they do not control anything. So what you want to do is leave bone weight map at none and just hit zero strength. You can middle click to easily select different bones. So zero, zero, zero. Oops, got to first select the type box. There we go. Now this would be thumb base. This would be thumb mid. This would be um, tip. If you name your skele skeletons in Modeler and import them, if you name them the same as the weight map, they will automatically be assigned, which is very nice. Middle base. Middle mid. Middle tip. So zero, and that is ring base. Mid and ring tip zero. And this is pinky base. Pinky mid. Pinky tip. I'm gonna select this. This is index base. Index mid and index. Oops. Index tip. That should be all of them. There we go. So now these bones will control the m corresponding meshes without interfering with anything else. So at this point you have a functional rig that you can use for rudimentary animations. Later on we'll have a tutorial with more advanced techniques, different kind of ways to set up your bones, inverse kinematics, how to make custom controllers, and how to mirror hierarchies. Thanks for watching.